Hey guys, we're going to talk about oxygen delivery devices today. We're going to talk about what they are and why they are important in our, our area of practice. I'll also go over some helpful abbreviations that you guys may see in your practice. So what is an O2 device? This is any device that is used to administer, regulate, or supplement the amount of oxygen a patient may receive. The expected outcome of any oxygen delivery device is to increase the oxygen level in arterial blood. This is referring to the oxygen that is bound to hemoglobin so that it can be transported and used within the body. So when administering any kind of oxygen device, you want to consider several factors. You want to consider the patient's status. This is referring to how the patient appears. Does the patient appear to be any, in any kind of respiratory distress? We want to consider their oxygen needs. Are they gasping for air? Are they in respiratory distress? We want to consider their lung sounds and, and how they uh, appear to be breathing at the time. And then we want to look at the efficiency of the oxygen delivery uh, device. So this is looking at the device itself and considering the concentration uh, that it provides for the patient. With the patient status and the oxygen needs, we need to look back at the respiratory assessment of the patient. We need to look at things such as the ABGs. Uh, this is going to be drawn by the respiratory therapist and they are, uh, it's, it's lab work that is very valuable to tell you uh, clues as to what's going on with the patient. Lastly, you want to check the pulse oximetry reading. This will give you your SpO2 reading or your oxygen saturation level. Uh, you do want to make sure your patient has a pulse ox on their finger, and you want to make sure that this pulse ox is correlating with a pleth wave. So the pleth wave will look something like this on the monitor. You're going to be looking at this pleth wave to determine the accuracy of, of patient um, of how well the patient is breathing. Um, this is going to give you your oxygen saturation reading. Um, the only thing I have to caution you with with the uh, pleth waveform is to make sure that you have a strong waveform such as this. If the pleth waveform is poor, the calculation of the oxygen saturation reading may be wrong. The last thing I want to hit on with um, why your patient may need an oxygen delivery device and when it's appropriate to deliver these is that the American Heart Association states that the oxygen saturation level should be 94% or higher. Uh, why is this number what it is? We'll talk more in detail later on, but just know that you may see standing orders uh, from your provider in regards to this number, uh, maybe a little higher or a little lower, uh, but we'll go over in detail later on in further videos. Lastly is the uh, abbreviations that you may see in your practice. The first abbreviation that I want to show you is SAO2. What is that? That is the percentage of um, oxygen saturation of arterial blood. Um, so S stands for saturation, A stands for arterial, O2 stands for oxygen. And so that is a, an important uh, abbreviation there that you will see in your area of practice. Another abbreviation that you will see is FiO2. This is the uh, fraction of inspired oxygen. So what does this abbreviation stand for? F is fraction, I is inspired, and O2 is oxygen. When you consider the concentration of room air itself, what is the FiO2 of that? So room air the FiO2 is 21 percent. And so this will um, be talked about more in detail later on in upcoming videos and how this number can be um, uh, added or um, how we can add to this number specifically when um, adding liters of oxygen. So we'll speak to that more in detail later on. So for now this concludes this video. Thank you and we'll see you in the next video.